Hello everyone, welcome to the Westland Public Library Cookbook Review. I'm Sarah, one of the adult services librarians at the library, and I'm also a camera shy amateur home chef who has volunteered to cook under the scrutiny of film for your pleasure. In this video, I will be reviewing Bread Illustrated, a step-by-step -step guide to achieving baker quality results at home by the America's Test Kitchen. For this demonstration, I have chosen the focaccia recipe, which was the first recipe I chose from this book in 2016. It is a relatively simple, no need, K-N-E-A-D recipe that can be made in a matter of hours when the sponge is developed overnight. It is also perfect with soups or by itself, but I have yet to find a bread that wasn't. Let's get started. This focaccia recipe relies on a sponge to develop the flavor of the dough. In a large bowl, measure out two and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, then combine with two and two-third ounces of water and one-fourth teaspoon instant or rapid rice yeast. There are cup conversions in the book, but I notice more consistency with baking when you use ounces. Once all of these ingredients are well incorporated, cover tightly with a plastic cover and let sit at room temperature for at least six hours. I would typically allow this to sit overnight. When you are ready to prepare the dough, measure out 12 and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, 10 ounces of room temperature water, one teaspoon of instant yeast, and two teaspoons salt. Kosher is recommended. To start the dough, you will combine the all-purpose flour, water, and instant yeast into your sponge and stir until well incorporated. You will cover the bread again for another 15 minutes before adding your salt. Doing this will prevent the salt from slowing the yeast growth. Continue to mix the dough for about a minute, cover, and let sit for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you will use a grease spoon or rubber spatula to fold the edges of the focaccia towards the middle. You will turn the bowl 45 degrees and continue to do this for a total of 8 folds. Once done, you will cover for another 30 minutes, then repeat the folding process again before covering and letting the dough rest for 30 minutes to 1 hour. If you have a baking stone, it is recommended at this time it is placed on the top rack, then the oven heated to a whopping 500 degrees Fahrenheit. While the dough is resting, you can prepare two 9-inch round cake pans for cooking your focaccia in. This was quite an interesting approach to the recipe, and I found that the shape and size to be extremely convenient when making bread for work week lunches. To prepare these tins, you will simply coat the pans each with 2 tablespoons oil and 1 half teaspoon salt. For the sake of filming, I rested the dough for 30 minutes, but I usually recommend an hour. I was also running out of all-purpose flour and had to be conservative with my flour usage. I noticed these two factors made my dough more sticky and wet than I am used to, which will have an effect on the size of the baked bread, but luckily not the flavor. Once the dough is rested to a point you like, you will turn the dough out onto a lightly floured surface, then divide the dough into two equal portions. You should cover the dough you are not working with with a greased plastic wrap to avoid any film or skin development. Working with one piece at a time, you will try to tuck the edges of the dough under until you form a ball. Then transfer the form ball to one of the prepared pants, first rubbing the dough seam side down to coat in oil, then turning the dough over and greasing the other side. Cover the dough while you repeat this process and then let both sit for five minutes. Once the dough has rested, you will gently push the dough to the edges of the pan. If the dough springs back, let rest for another five to 10 minutes before trying again. Once the dough has been stretched to the edges, you will poke the surface of the dough 25 to 30 times with a fork. It is at this time that you will add your toppings to the focaccia. In the original recipe, they recommended one tablespoon of fresh rosemary per loaf. Since I only had dry rosemary, I soaked the rosemary in olive oil and let rest for 30 minutes, at which time I spread over the top. This is usually a good winter solution I use, but I realized in my haste I knocked out a lot of the air in the dough while spreading the mixture on the top and proceeded to cover the four holes that I just created. Don't do this. Once the topping has been finalized, cover the dough with a greased plastic for another 10 minutes until bubbly. It is finally time to bake. To do so, you will put the pans in the oven on the baking stone and turn down the heat to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. 
If you don't have a baking stone, online bakers have recommended an upside down baking sheet, which has worked relatively well for me, but it doesn't require the long preheat process of the stone. This dough will cook for 25 to 30 minutes and it is recommended that you switch halfway through. Once the tops are a golden brown, you will remove the pans from the oven and let cool for an agonizing 30 minutes. Of course, because my attention was torn between filming and baking, I somehow managed to get a bread loaf stuck to one of the pans, which is honestly the first time it has ever happened. In retrospect, I realized that I had yet to make this recipe with my new oven, and I had let the oven go unobserved longer because of what I was used to doing. Luckily, much of the bread was still retrievable and edible, and I enjoyed it for the next several days. Thank you for joining me virtually today. Leave a comment in the section below if there are other recipes from this cookbook that you would like others to try, or other recommendations for similar cookbooks. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page if you want to see more virtual programs, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for additional content.